Container cars with individual units for less than carload lots. So constructed that each container may be shifted from car to car according to its destination. Here's a freight train pulling out. Let's go with it as it starts its journey. For this is the way America moves its goods more economically than by any other means of transportation. In the caboose, members of the crew serve as lookouts, watchful of their train. On the shelter on the engine tender, a brakeman watches from the head end. In the cabs of both freight and passenger locomotives, an added safety precaution. Signal panels give the engineer and the fireman constant information about track conditions ahead. Those illuminated dots on the panels reproduce the wayside signals, regardless of outside visibility. If the signal changes to a less favorable indication, a warning whistle sounds, which the engineer must acknowledge by turning off the sounding device. New technical developments, like radar, for instance, are constantly explored for their possible application to railroad safety and efficiency. The search never ends. Already for added safety, there is now in operation the train telephone, in use on both freight and passenger trains. It is typical of the fruits of never-ending research. Engine extra 6841 West, calling Mifflin signal tower. Engine extra 6841 West, calling Mifflin signal tower. Over. Mifflin signal tower, answering engine extra 6841 West, over. Making use of electric currents in the tracks and along telephone lines paralleling the tracks, two-way telephone communication is established between engine and signal towers along the route. From one train to another. And between locomotive engineer and crew members riding the caboose. Yes, I understand. I'll call you again when we pass Huntington. And so a nation's freight keeps rolling, keeping a nation's business on the move, providing also a link to foreign countries the world over. Some of these cars loaded with coal will arrive at seaports for ships that sail the seven seas. Others will go to inland ports for vessels that sail the Great Lakes. Coal cars by the thousands, unloaded at the rate of one every minute. An ingenious device known as a pig pushes each car up the incline. The car is then raised to the dumper and quickly unloaded. Other cars are destined for the car floats. At New York, for instance, much of the food and merchandise for the city is handled in that way. Cars loaded away to the grain elevator for storage until the ship is ready to carry on the journey. Other cars carry ore and minerals. When iron ore arrives by ship, these giant unloaders pick up 17 tons in a bite and unload a vessel in a matter of hours. This is the vital material which feeds our great steel mills. Vital because steel is the basis of American industry. Still one other phase of this vast business of moving goods from one place to another is door-to-door -door delivery, which provides the last link in the chain of nationwide transportation service. But a railroad is not alone a thing of steel and cars and rails. There is something else, something that gives it warmth and life and vitality, something that makes it click for old men and women. Yes, railroading is people constantly trained for their jobs to give friendly, efficient railroad service. Take Jim, for instance, an engineer on a cracked blue ribbon train. Jim's father was a railroad man, and Jim's boy wants to be a railroad man, too. After his day with his family, Jim has a job to do. Let's go with him and see some of thousand and one things that make a great railroad.
Here is his locomotive, one of the biggest of a fleet of nearly 5,000 engines. It is brought out of the roundhouse, ready for its run. Its tender is filled with water and coal. And now it will be coupled to the train. The air and steam lines are connected and the air brakes tested. Meanwhile, you have bought your ticket. Perhaps you've made a reservation. The reservation bureau has it ready for you. You may prefer the savings and economy of the air-conditioned reclining seat coach. Or perhaps you prefer the air-conditioned parlor car. Or a roomette, a bedroom or master bedroom or an overnight journey. All aboard. Jim slowly opens the throttle and you are on your way. Meanwhile, from the signal tower that controls the maze of tracks and switches at every large terminal, Jim's route out of the station is lined up. The model board displays every track, switch, and signal light leading into and out of the area controlled by the tower. The movement of every train within the area is indicated by changing lights on the board. Here we can follow the course of Jim's train as it moves out of the station. Signal towers along the route control the movement of every train. Meanwhile, meals are served in the dining car by men and women who, like all railroad employees, are constantly schooled in courtesy and efficiency. And passengers relax in comfort as the teamwork of a great organization makes their journey safe and sure through scenes of natural beauty. Today's trains, fine as they are, are about to be surpassed in beauty, comfort, and conveniences. New cars and new trains, more individual rooms for the privacy of yourself and your family, beautiful coaches, finer lounge cars, all these are now being built to make tomorrow's railroad travel not only the safest, but the most luxurious the world has ever known. Progress, new services, improvements, and safety are the tools of the railroad team. Jim is part of that team, and the most modern automatic electric signaling system in the world guides him safely on. Jim knows the organization behind his job, which includes an army of maintenance men who keep the roadway in shape. Track walkers are constantly making their rounds of inspection. Then there is the train dispatcher's office, which directs the movement of all trains and keeps a record of their progress. Jim knows, too, that every signal tower along the way will be notified of his progress, and that each tower will report his time of passing to the train dispatcher. He knows that every point in the system may be kept in touch with at all times. Messages of every kind are constantly sent and received by teletype. Telephone exchanges permit instant communication to all points of the system. This exchange, just one of many, is big enough for a city of 15,000. Electricity, too, plays an important part in railroading. In areas of great traffic density, electrification speeds operations. 